Apple getting sued for not giving you enough storage, MKBHD takes down a car company, and NVIDIA's 1000 watt GPU. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, March 4th. 2024. We're going to start off today talking about a proposed class action lawsuit against Apple for giving people the piddly amount of storage known as five gigabytes for your iCloud. According to this lawsuit, which is seeking damages because Apple is just forcing people into a one-way ecosystem, saying that Apple device holders are given five gigabytes of free iCloud storage space. But as Apple's iCloud revenues attest, most users find this insufficient for their storage needs and purchase a supplemental iCloud storage plan. And further, that Apple nevertheless arbitrarily requires that its mobile device holders use iCloud to back up certain file types, mainly device settings as well as apps and apps data. With respect to other file types, Apple mobile device holders can select from other cloud-based storage providers servicing the market, including the competitors. But the idea that because you can back up your phone, specifically your apps and like your specific iOS details only to iCloud, that is why they're coming in saying, hey, Apple's kind of forcing you to pay them because they're only giving you five gigabytes. Which is an intriguing take. I mean, I remember back in the day just being blown away at that Gmail gave me one gigabyte for free. That was like the big thing and it was invite only and you had to have your friends recommend you and I got in super early and I, if you recommended enough people, they gave you like, I think an extra 0.15 gigabytes and now everybody I think gets 15 gigabytes by default. So hearing that five gigabytes isn't enough and they're being sued for that, I, I guess it makes sense from the idea that they're forcing you to do it. But against the argument, some people have pointed out that despite the fact that you can back things up via the cloud that way, and that's how Apple does it, they still offer you the option to back it up locally if you use a cable to your iTunes account on a computer or a Mac. You can actually back it up without the cloud, so them giving you five gigabytes for free is them trying to get you in the ecosystem, but you're not forced to use it if you don't want to. You don't have to back up via the cloud, so we'll see how this proposed lawsuit goes down. It's intriguing. I, again, just look at it from, I got one gigabyte for free from Gmail and I was so happy. You know what else I'm happy about? Today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Soylent, the world's most perfect food. While I was down with COVID last month, I had absolutely no energy to make food for myself and my wife was out of the country. So luckily, Soylent was there to be a quick and easy way for me to get my nutrition in while I was down for the count. My personal favorite is the Cafe Mocha, which is why I'm not holding it because I drink it no matter what. And that was certainly what kept me going. Soylent follows the science and chooses ingredients that are functional, not fads. Every ingredient in Soylent's formula has been proven effective through clinical research, resulting in a perfect synergy of macro and micronutrients to keep you healthy. And not only is Soylent good for you, you, but it's good for everybody. Something I appreciate is that Soylent gives back to those in need, having donated more than 6 million meals through their hashtag Soylent for Good campaign to dozens of hospitals, shelters, and community organizations. Get your diet back on track and see what wonders plant-based protein can do for you. Check out the link in the video description and use code UFDTech30. The first 500 people to use our link and code will receive 30% off their first subscription with Soylent. A big thanks to Soylent for sponsoring today's video and for being made of plant protein, not people. Well, it turns out Elon Musk is not satisfied when it comes to open AI and he's filing a lawsuit against them because they breached a contract because they became a closed source de facto subsidiary of Microsoft. Elon Musk going after open AI because Microsoft owns a 49% stake, $13 billion has been invested, and Elon thinks that at one point, OpenAI and Sam Altman and the rest of the co-founders agreed that this would be an open source project that would be not for profit. And so he's accusing these people as breaching that founding agreement, especially after Elon had invested $44 million into the company over four years and was at one point a board member of this company and said that he chose not to go with them when they became for profit because he felt that that was an imposition on the morals of what the company was supposed to stand for. OpenAI obviously going against this, saying that they categorically disagree with the lawsuit that Musk has filed, but there's been kind of a mixed reaction out on the internet to this. A lot of people saying this makes a lot of sense. OpenAI kind of did close down all of a sudden once they realized what they had in chat GPT. They realized that they could make billions and Sam Altman's trying to raise trillions. So this does feel like a betrayal of trust. And so this lawsuit kind of makes sense for Elon 
Elon. But then you have other lawyers out there kind of indicating that Elon doesn't really have that much of a leg to stand on, legally speaking, because this founder agreement wasn't actually a contract that was signed by anybody, but just kind of a vibe that all of the founders had together that was kind of assumed over emails, but wasn't a legally binding document. And OpenAI kind of having people go step by step through this to dismiss it, which makes a lot of sense. OpenAI would do that. Sam Altman coming out and saying that he misses the man he used to worship, he used to try to compete on the value of increasing their technology. So a lot of bad blood here. We'll see how this plays out in the court of law. We'll keep you updated as everything progresses. I think it's very clear, regardless of whether or not OpenAI did anything illegal or a breach of contract, it's clear that they are markedly different as a company in their approach when it comes to their nonprofit status and how they're trying to approach things once ChatGPT got released to the wild. Everything that they were doing behind the scenes with like GPT-2 and GPT-1 and everything that OpenAI kind of stood for years ago feels to have fallen apart in the face of tremendous wealth, which I I can't say I would make a different decision if I was off able to ask people for five to seven trillion dollars. Let me know if you have that kind of moral fortitude down below in the comments. But it turns out Fisker, which is an EV company, they don't make noises when they start up. They don't have the fortitude to stay afloat very much longer. They've announced that they're laying off 15% of their workforce and that they are losing money quite a bit. Its gross margin was negative 35%. They produced 10,000 cars, only sold around 5,000 of them, and they're trying to make all of this work. However, with all of these negative financials, they've announced that they're going to be putting on delay the other vehicles that they've announced, such as their Alaska pickup, which looks so freaking cool. It's like a Santa Cruz, but it has like pass through to slide in. Kyler would love this. This is like an EV Baja, but it's no longer happening. And the reason that I'm really talking about this is that a lot of it might be due to the fact that MKBHD released this video two weeks ago on his car channel saying this is the worst car I've ever reviewed, which is the Fisker Ocean. This is the vehicle Fisker was hoping would actually be financially successful enough to save their company. But in this video, MKBHD points out the fact that the vehicle has all of the typical EV things like the motors and the and all of the driving experience, that's good, but the software is horrendous. It's bad, and Fisker's kind of been promising that they'll fix it at some point in the near future. And this all came to a head when a car dealership who lent MKBHD the vehicle called the guy who owns the dealership to find out who bought that car. And if you watch this video, it seems like Fisker's panicking because this may have caused people who are waiting for this car, who have put in the pre-order, who are going to become potential customers, aren't actually going to end up becoming potential customers, and that's causing Fisker to have some financial uh, difficulties for the foreseeable future. It's an intriguing thing, especially because one of the worst parts of this video is that the person from Fisker, when they are talking about MKBHD, it's clear they don't know who he is. One of the most influential tech YouTubers of any, any generation ever has tens of millions, like he reviews cars all of the time. He's like if you're actually paying attention to who's in the car space, his channel will have come up at some point, but it, it's clear that even from the higher ups at Fisker, they had no idea who this was, which I mean, the last time Fisker started up and didn't succeed, this kind of feels of the same vein where it's, it, they're a little disconnected from what they're trying to make happen. And Meta says you have to disconnect your Oculus account. You're not allowed to have it anymore. You gotta get, you gotta transfer everything over because it's getting deleted as of March 29th. This is something that's been in the works for a little bit. Meta has been trying to push everybody over to a Meta account instead of the Oculus account. And they've kind of been giving incentives to make this happen. But now it is official. They've announced the launch date that your Oculus account will be deleted. So get everything migrated over because if you don't, you won't have that anymore. I know a lot of people are going to be sad because this is the death of Oculus. Almost officially, it's kind of been like that for a long time. With Meta, I think a lot of people really couldn't have chosen a company they would want running their VR headset any less. It just, it appears to be a negative sentiment on that side, but you gotta, you gotta migrate over, which is what we're gonna do over to Reese for deals. Yo, welcome back to FT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone, and you know, 
got some deals. Starting off today, we have this KTC 24 inch 1080p 100 hertz monitor for only $89.99, making it $30 off and a great way to get into high refresh rate gaming on a budget. But then next up, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X CPU for only $189.31 with the included promo code, making it $259.69 off. I had to say that just cause you know. And then lastly, we have my favorites, the Sony WH-1000XM4 wireless noise canceling headphones, which are my personal daily drivers and I will 100% recommend them. You can currently pick up a brand new pair for only $249.99, making it $100 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I don't understand this deal. Spotify is now rolling out an audiobook only subscription, as opposed to the music Spotify premium, which includes audiobooks. This one's slightly different. You can pay Spotify $10 a month, which gets you 15 hours of listening to an audio audiobook, which for a lot of audiobooks isn't even the whole gosh dang thing. So you're paying like 67 cents an hour? It's it's strange. Uh, Spotify Premium, which is $11 a month and includes the music, also has that same 15 hour thing. I don't know why you're doing that. At Spotify really trying to compete with Audible and the audiobook space. I've noticed in my Spotify subscription that they are saying, hey, we have this audiobook that you could listen to. And I'm like, oh, that's actually like a higher quality title. I wasn't expecting to get this included. It's nice to see that that's there, but I I don't know if I'm wanting to migrate over to Spotify for that. Let me know if it entices you at all. But I'll tell you one thing that did entice me was MSI's new GPU that they launched, the Expert, the RTX 4080 Super that came out. But now it's coming out in 4070 Tissaper as well. You can get it on the cheaper and it looks pretty. I like this graphics card. It's very beautiful in my eyes. And my eyes are going to melt when I behold the next generation GPUs that Nvidia is planning on announcing probably later this year, if not later this month. Dell coming out and talking about the next generation Blackwell chips, specifically the B200 accelerator, saying that it's gonna up your electricity bill, which data centers probably have to prepare for the B200, at least in Dell's conversation, saying that they are prepared to direct liquid cool the energy density of a thousand watts per GPU. The current H100 that's out there comes in at around 700 watts. So this is a notable improvement of roughly 40 45%. It's an it's a heavy increase to have a thousand watt GPUs. Now this doesn't likely mean that you're gonna have a thousand watt GPU hitting your system, but it does probably mean that the GPU that's gonna be in your system is gonna be faster, not because it, you're getting more power per watt, but because you're just getting more power total. You have to suck more juice and it's going to be that much more. I could potentially be wrong here. Maybe Nvidia has some tricks up their sleeve where they're going to 3x the performance and increase the power by 40%, which is just a huge gain. So if you go down to the more efficient ones that are drawing 700 watts, you're way faster than you were on the previous generation. And based on everything Nvidia has been doing lately, I'm not sure that's the case, but we are potentially expected to see this get announced at GTC later this month in March, which is Nvidia's big AI conference and of course they would want to announce that they have these new accelerators coming out which could potentially put their market cap on the US stock exchange to like four bajillion they could they could just be every company combined together Nvidia could be all of the companies because AI it's a big deal and you guys are a big deal in my eyes so let's respond to some of your comments from Friday's episode of hot news we got Pwetty saying can't wait for the Red Dead Redemption scent pack now with horse crap and cattle patties which is a reference to the game scent thing oh it's still here that we talked about last week this I mean regardless of AI it kind of works it's not it's not as stupid but I mean it only has six things and then you have to pay for more DLC for the later scents, it's probably not going to take off, but it, it was neat to, to get to check it out. Then Darcia saying, Haha, Mrs. saying, I'm Kyle. Crack me up. I was not expecting that. He hasn't been around like that. That caught me totally off guard. I can't believe that even happened. And Neo Cyrus saying, SATA SSDs have been sitting at 600 megabytes per second in real use forever now, regardless of what the spec is. That is true. But that uh, that micro SD Express is gonna be faster than that by about 200 megabytes per second. But also like one of the weird things is that like there hasn't been a SATA 4 and I have not looked into this at all to 
understand why SATA hasn't increased its speeds on mainstream platforms, but it, we've been at SATA three speeds since 2009. A full 15 years we've been chugging on these 600 megabyte per second drives. Then Gene saying, isn't DisplayPort better than HDMI? Especially since HDMI makes a pig's rear of naming certification spec requirements. And if not for the app, then there's plenty of inadequate cables around, unless the people who acquire the label put them on inadequate cables to scam people. Geez, HDMI. It does, it does feel that way, but unfortunately there are just plenty of displays that don't have a display port connector, namely TVs or anything kind of on the professional side. They're using different inputs, not necessarily display port. And so while display port is great, it's good for gaming. We love it. We use it all of the time. I, I, I'm not quite sure on the politics of why DisplayPort is not on televisions. It's not included at all. I'd be curious to, to learn more about that as it moves forward. But then we got Z Bishop saying, HDMI is to DisplayPort what Lightning is to USB-C. Worse and more annoying. Yeah, but it it was better first. It was H it was good at one point. It, it was it was nice. Zizosa saying, nothing better than watching hot news on my birthday while eating a bowl of oatmeal for breakfast. I disagree. You could be having a cup of rare brew coffee. Potentially. Happy birthday, by the way. Enjoy that oatmeal. I, that's a good. That's a good hearty breakfast. I'm proud of you. Keep it up. Keep filling your belly full of fiber and love. See you next episode tomorrow. For honest.